I'm John McKee, editor of Messianic Apologetics, www.messianicapologetics.net. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for future teachings and updates. Messianic Insider is a podcast offering you something that your local Messianic congregation is usually not set up to provide. Offer a place to discuss critical and very deep issues which affect the future and stability of our faith community. We want to thank you for your continued offerings and support toward our ministry efforts. You can donate online at outreachisrael.net forward slash support. Today on Messianic Insider, in our series, Defending the Divinity and Messiahship of Yeshua, we are responding to, there is always a difference between the Messiah and God. Surely, at one point or another, in your messianic experience of faith and Bible study and theology, you have encountered people who, either questioning or just outright denying Yeshua as God, have said, I don't see any place in the Holy Scriptures where Yeshua is called God. There's always a separation intended between the Father and the Son. So today, we will be responding to this. We will be addressing this. Much of the material in these studies is taken from our ministry publication, Confronting Yeshua's Divinity and messiahship. There is a link to this resource in the description. Uh, it is a relatively small book, uh, also available as an instantly downloadable ebook for Amazon Kindle. If you have a Messianic congregation or fellowship, this is a resource that I highly recommend you have available in your congregational information center. This will help so many people who encounter those perhaps at your congregation, at a fellowship mealtime, at a Bible study, whatever the circumstances are. They're looking at some website or social media channel they shouldn't be. If they get broadsided with particular reasons why Yeshua of Nazareth is apparently not God or not the Messiah, this is a resource which is going to help people a great deal. Certainly it's going to help them not make any rash decisions, but will help you. All right, well, you have been told this. Let's discuss this. And if you're in congregational leadership or teaching, this is a tool that's going to help a lot of people who entertain doubts from jumping off the proverbial cliff. Okay. The New Testament scriptures always present a difference between the Messiah and God proving that they are not one and the same. Because of the separation of the Messiah and God, how can he be God? It is correct that within the apostolic scriptures or New Testament, we see a coexistence of the Father and Son presented to us. Because there is a separation between the Father and the Son, does this all of a sudden mean that the Son is something less than God? It should be legitimately asked. How can Yeshua be the Son of God if he does not have the distinct and specific nature of being God? Philippians 2.6 What do we do with statements appearing in the apostolic scriptures where there is an intention for both the Father and the Son to be represented as God? The Gospel of John opens with the classic statement, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John 1, 1 and 2, New American Standard. John teaches that the Word, the Messiah Yeshua who took on human flesh, John 1, 14, was God. Some have claimed that since the Greek clause, Theos ein ha logos, the Word was God, lacks the definite article ha with theos, that it is something only akin to the word or Yeshua being something supernatural but not God. 
the New World Translation produced by the Jehovah's Witnesses, notably rendered John 1-1 with, the word was a God. Yet, were the definite article ha to appear, the word was the God, it would mean that the word was all that exclusively composed God, such as the word was the Godhead. If John 1-1 communicated the word was the God, then the preceding claim, the word was with God, ha, logos, ein, pros, ton, theon, would be unsustainable. As Leon Morris directs us, quote, John is leaving open the possibility that there may be more to God than the word, unquote. From the New International Commentary on the New Testament, Gospel of John volume. The word, Yeshua the Messiah, is indeed God. The word is not, however, exclusively or entirely all that composes the Godhead. The fact that the Godhead is plural, meaning that both the Father and Son are divine, is evident to Bible readers all the way back in the book of Genesis. The Lord said in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. New American Standard. Some say that the us referred to is not God, meaning that Elohim is not to be regarded as a plural, but rather the us is God speaking to his celestial court. The us referred to has to be Elohim because Genesis 1-7, excuse me, 127 says that in the image of God he created him. Human beings were created but Selem Elohim, not in the image of the angels or any of the other powers in heaven. Ecclesiastes 12.1 notably admonishes, Remember also thy creators, the Hebrew Borecha, in the days of thy youth. Young's literal translation. Creators. This verse attests to the plurality of God as all things came into being through him, the word, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. John 1.3, New American Standard. It was not only God the Father, but also Yeshua the Son. Colossians 1, 16 and 17, Hebrews 1, 2 and 3, who is credited as being directly responsible for creating the universe. Proverbs 30, verse 4. In the apostolic writings, when God is most often referred to, the reference made is to God the Father, but this should not be taken as implying that Yeshua is not God. In the Pauline letters, we see the greeting frequently issued, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Romans 1.27, 1 Corinthians 1.3, 2 Corinthians 1.2. Galatians 1.3, Ephesians 1.2, Philippians 1.2, Colossians 1.3, 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, 2 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, Philemon 3. Notice how God, or Theos, is most always a title used in reference to the Father. Notice also how with Yeshua the Messiah being called Lord, that the title Kurios was used in the Greek Septuagint to render the divine name Yotevave, and that with God the Father and Yeshua the Lord, used in such close proximity, their association within the Godhead is unmistakably being referred to. Consider how Paul adapts the Shema of Deuteronomy 6.4 in 1 Corinthians 8.6 with the Father and the Son identified together. For us, there is but one Lord, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for him, 
and one Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, by whom are all things, and we exist through him. New American Standard. Yeshua the Son, as Lord, is integrated into the same divine identity as his Father, God. Because God in the apostolic scriptures is most frequently identified with the Father, does not all of a sudden mean that Yeshua is not God. There are some places where Yeshua the Messiah is directly referred to with the title Theos. In Titus 2.13, Paul writes that believers are to be looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Messiah Yeshua, identifying Yeshua as tu megalu theu, or our great God. Paul speaks of the Jewish ancestry of Yeshua in Romans 9.5, specifying from whom is the Messiah according to the flesh, who is over all God-blessed forever. The epistle of 2 Peter is composed for those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, 2 Peter 1.1. And surely not to be overlooked is how the disciple Thomas, upon seeing the resurrected Messiah, cried out to him and exclaimed, My Lord and my God, John 20.28. All references New American Standard. This was no mere statement of astonishment on Thomas's part, as he recognized Yeshua as being God, per Yeshua's own word of how, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am Ego Amy, John 8, 28, New American Standard. In John 10, 30, Yeshua told those assembled at the portico of Solomon, celebrating Hanukkah that I and the Father are one. In oral Hebrew dialogue, he would have said something like, Ani the avi echad anachnu, Dalich, or the ani the haav echad, the United Bible Society's Hebrew New Testament. The written Greek source text has ego kai ha pater Hen Esmen. In using the word Echad for one, there is a correlation made with the Shema of Deuteronomy 6 4. The Lord is one, or the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. New Jewish uh, Publication Society version. By Yeshua having said that he and the Father were one, he did not just claim that he and the Father were of one accord. Surely, many of the Jewish religious leaders of the day thought that they and God were of one heart and mind, in agreement and in one accord, in terms of how people were to live and conduct themselves. The reaction seen to Yeshua's claim that I and the Father are one, John 10.30, is the Jews picked up stones again to stone him, John 10.31. Both references New American Standard. The Shema is the declaration that only the Lord is the one true God. Did these Jews present pick up stones because Yeshua claimed that he was just in one accord with the Father? No. They picked up stones because in claiming that he was a Chad or one with the Father, they saw that Yeshua was claiming to be divine and they considered that to be blasphemous even with Yeshua as the Son having noted that his Father is greater, John 10, 29, at least requiring some pause to consider his nature, which they did not allow. Bruce Mill is right to note, quote, a claim such as this reflects no merely human consciousness. It is nothing other than a word-made-flesh consciousness, unquote, from his resource, The Message of John. Earlier in John 5.18b, one of the reasons why the Jewish religious leaders are said to have wanted to kill Yeshua is because he was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. 
New American Standard. They recognized that Yeshua as the Son presented himself to them as having a very special relationship with his Father, and Yeshua was claiming to be of the same divine substance as the Father. Yet, as Philippians 2, 6 explains, Yeshua did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, New Revised Standard, or something to be used to his own advantage, today's New International Version. Yeshua the Messiah legitimately had equality with God, yet such equality could not be used by him in order to avoid his humiliation and sacrifice for sinful humanity, Philippians 2, 7 and 8. There is a coexistence between the Father and the Son in the Apostolic Scriptures, but the Godhead has been plural ever since the beginning. References to God in the Apostolic Scriptures, particularly in the Pauline Epistles, are most often referring to God the Father. At the same time, Yeshua the Messiah is specifically referred to as God in various places as well. Most critical to recognize is that Yeshua is referred to as Lord, and that if you confess with your mouth Yeshua as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10.9, New American Standard. This is not just some recognition of Yeshua as master or leader, or as C.E.B. Cranfield concludes from his Romans commentary, quote, the usage of kurios more than 6,000 times in the Septuagint to represent the Tetragrammaton, Yotevave, must surely be regarded of decisive importance here, unquote. This indeed indicates that acknowledging Yeshua the Messiah as God incarnate, the Lord, or Yotevave, is required for salvation. If you all found this content enjoyable and useful, please be sure to drop a thumbs up for this teaching. As always, we thank you for your continued support of our ministry's efforts. God bless and shalom, and we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, be sure to check us out at www.messianicapologetics.net.